What is or who is I am? This term is used because this is who we are, but a subscriber uh, commented in one of my videos in asking to make a video describing what I am is for those who are not of a biblical background, this person said, and I want to share with you um, and I think this is really important. It's like just a foundation understanding of what you're saying or declaring rather who you are identifying as the truth of who you are. I mean, it's just so much just in those two little words. I am. It's just, there's a lot going on in those two words. And I really want to give you guys like a basic understanding, right? Uh, or even more of an advanced understanding, depending on where you are at. And, uh, and, and what I am is and when you declare it, because the first thing I want to knock out of the park is that it has nothing to do with religion. And that even the word God is not a religious term. It has nothing to do with anyone's faith uh, in what they practice or what you were raised with, okay? So that is what we're going to get into because I am <laughs> intending that you all have a deeper understanding, connection, and with your I am because that is just, that's where it's at, you guys. That's why you're watching any kind of YouTube video manifesting or why you were watching a movie about law of attraction or anything. It's all calling you home to the truth of I am. So welcome, my name is Rose, and welcome to The Rosy Life, where we help you free your mind and follow your heart and live a life that you love. If you're interested in working with me one-on-one, -on -one, you can go to rosylife.com. I put the links down below, and you can join the Rosy Life course and community, which is uh, our private forum and there's lessons in there and videos additional things that I add in there and we meet once a week and I do live Q&A every single Wednesday and and they're all recorded so it doesn't matter what time zone you're in you can always watch um, the lives recorded and ask questions later and I come back and answer those too so um, you can also go to the website you can see all the other stuff and the course on the one and all of that so thank you guys so much for subscribing to the rosy life thank you for liking my videos and and thank you for commenting and your encouragement and your love and support i just truly appreciate you guys so so much and um, i love you guys and i love showing up here and sharing everything that I I have learned and things that I continue to learn and things that are continuously being downloaded and revealed to me and because I just I love taking things that feel mystical and feel complicated including the Bible or Neville Goddard used to be really like a a, a difficult one for me to get sometimes and and then I also because of my background as a psychologist I I like to bring in that I know that how people like to think you know how we were conditioned to think so I like bringing in my background as a psychologist into my learning about the truth in the law and making it a little bit more fun and simple so yes I'm a little goofy and I spontaneously show up but that's just me <laughs> Okay, so stick with me. So let's get to this. So this um, video is inspired by a subscriber who asked to, she wants to understand what I am is. And, and, and I love that she asked that question because that literally for several days before, maybe weeks, who knows, right? I had been uh, thinking like, I really want to do more explanations of these terms that are I'm using and that a lot of um, coaches or YouTubers use to describe things, but understanding them in a non-religious way, because um, even when I have gone out with friends and there's other people around and they ask questions about the law and these kind of questions pop up there too. So I think it's important to understand that the Bible, first of all, is a metaphysical, and Neville Goddard said it the best, it's a psychological drama about yourself. And it's a metaphysical book. It's not that all these people actually existed, right? And they're, and they're all states of consciousness, all the characters in the Bible, right? But the most important, the most important of them all 
is I am, which is why you hear it so much and where you hear about affirmations that you shouldn't say you want or or that or something like that like they worry about past tense present tense but it's not about past tense or present tense because there's only now tense first of all and and next they're using i am because it's present saying that i i am it now but it's not about time it's not about am i saying it in the wrong tense it's about declaring i am that's that's like on another level you guys it's not worrying about how you're saying the words it's understanding what i am is why you can say it is a declaration right that's what you want to dive deeper into and and increasing your awareness of it not getting caught up in if i'm saying an affirmation correctly so here we have <clears throat> i and i wrote just a few things down and i want to get into this so first of all where does i am come from so god or I wrote the universe too, because really, I'm gonna move my camera just a little bit. Really, um, um, God is all, is everything, right? And this is what many people use the word universe as well. They're really interchangeable, right? Because universe implies everything, right? I, in here on the Rosie Life, we use the term God and that's what i do right god and i make these videos you know every day that's i know i'm not doing this alone i know i'm doing this with with god the i am right so we are creating bringing this next video to you so god all there is universe all there is right had an idea right imagined man i am God had an idea and imagined I am. It's all the I am, okay? So I am had an idea of creating I am. So an idea in divine mind. This is the divine mind, okay? So I am created us in his image. And when the Bible talks about the son of God, right? He's talking about all of us. We're all the son of God doesn't matter if you're gender this is not gender okay it's about your spiritual being so I am is an idea in the divine mind of God okay so we are created in his image meaning perfect flawless perfect okay I am is the true you <laughs> that's who you really are I am that is the true of, truth of who you are okay so when we were created that idea in god's mind we were created perfect <clears throat> with all power all knowing <clears throat> and we have <clears throat> nothing that's missing from us we have all the power of god within us so when you declare i am that's what you're declaring it's not a past tense present tense blah 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 right you're declaring your power your power right here okay so that you are an idea in divine mind of God that's who you are that's who we all are okay so however right going into into this realm of Antichrist topic right I grew up in the church and I was taught that Antichrist mean <clears throat> mean that an Antichrist was coming and at the end of the world, right, in, in Revelation, talks about an antichrist and that you have to be wary of him and that he's going to be dressed in sheep's clothing. And there's so many scriptures about the antichrist and saying that <clears throat> there's this evil person that is going to come right and rule the world and and bob and like all this fear this is the stuff that i grew up with and comment down below if you guys grew up with that kind of stuff too so instead what antichrist means look at the word antichrist means you're against god it's the antichrist man you're anti you're saying no i am not a child of god no I'm not, I'm not, I'm not God. Whether you mean it like you're agnostic or atheist, or you mean it as like, no, that's a sin. You can't say that you are God. Whatever, any of all of that, 
falls under the Antichrist man, meaning you, you refuse to see yourself as the I am, the image of God, the perfect, holy, complete, right? That that's not the true you. Instead, you have, to, you have chosen, and this is really through mass conscious, right? Through the human race, mass conscious has seen, has decided, right, to separate themselves and sees themselves as separate, as a separate physical human body, right? That know that God created us, but we're not, we're not the son of God. We're not in Christ's image. We are not God. We are not that same power. Instead, it's separate. Another term is used ego, right? That the ego identifies itself as separate too. And it, and it wants to divide, why I draw a little squiggly line, it wants to divide and keep separate from God. It seeks, to, it seeks instead, it seeks to have pleasure. It, it seeks proof from its senses. So it utilizes the five senses as proof uh, that they're real, as proof that if whatever is real, right, they seek to provide pleasure to those senses, right? This is what it seeks. And they think that in this is what's real, okay? And uh, thoughts and feelings are their identity or his identity. So thoughts and feelings, whatever you're thinking and feeling that that's who you are, that you're this body that seeks pleasure and, and it has proof from the senses and that your thoughts and feelings are what's real, your senses are what's real, and that you're not God, that you are not separate, that you, and some might even believe that the, God created them, but they don't believe that they are God, them, that power is within them, that God is who they are, that they are literally one with God. There's no separation, right? They don't believe that. And then there's other people that are just like, no, right? This is the Antichrist man. There's no Antichrist bully coming in the world. It's literally your ego. You're feeling separate from God. That is what is anti against you believing that you are a child divine God of God. So I am is eternal. It's not limited in life, meaning it's eternal. It's like you were created and you're eternal. Even this physical body might die in erode or get sick or whatever, but you, the I am who you are is eternal. You never, you, it's infinite. So there's no death in who you are because, and that's where this um, scripture comes from before Abraham was born. I am. And that's in John uh, 858. And that saying, <clears throat> that scripture is telling you that before all people were created, before the things that you see in the 3D were created, before everything was created, before animals were created, before mountains and the ocean and the sun, everything, before everything was created, right? Before, because Abraham represents father in Bible. So Abraham represents the father of all, of all thoughts. It's of the father of a nation, meaning that many, many thoughts. Country means, nations means many, many thoughts in, in the Bible. So Abraham is the father of many, many thoughts. So before you even had thoughts, before you even had feelings, before you even had senses, before you were even born, before your parents and your grandparents and those parents and their parents, you were, you existed because you are the I am. You are that image of God. You are an idea of divine mind. There's no, think, you're, think, if you think about a thought right now, you think it's inside you and you think that it's a part of you, right? Well, that's God. That's what you are. Well, that's what we all are in God. We are in God's in his divine mind. You can't get any closer, you guys. There is no separation. So when we um, come become uh, a higher in awareness of who we are, this is what we start to let go of. And we, co we come into this. So I was thinking today, like, um, 
So if you think about it, you are born into, into the world thinking that this is, um, this is you, right? This is your body, your thoughts and your feelings and blah, 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 right? And that this over here is the law, right? Or consciousness, awareness, the law, okay? This is the law, God or the universe, the power, right? And that you see yourself over here as separate, that you see yourself as a body with feelings and thoughts. And then the third thing, if I had a third hand here, right? The third thing is, we'll say, you see that 3D, your life, what you see is out here, okay? So not only do you see yourself as separate from God, but now you even see that the 3D or your life or things happening around you are separate from you. Do you see how farther and farther that is keeping you away from who you are? Because not, so then what, ha what we do is when we come into the law, into the truth and learning about who we are, right? One of the first things that we learn is that the 3D is us pushed out or the 3D is just a projection of us, right? That the 3D is not the separate life and things happening outside of us having a life of its own. We start to learn that everything is outside of us. And no, it's not. We start understanding that we are the ones causing what we see in our life. We're the ones causing what things are manifesting in our own reality, okay? You can only speak for your own reality. You can't speak for others. You have to keep this to you, right? Because your reality is your responsibility and what you see is your, your responsibility and no one else is responsible for it. So you see, right? You understand that 3D is not outside of you. That now you understand that it's inside of you. So I'm going to put this in here. So you start getting that the 3D is inside of you, that everything's your projection. However, you still see that God or the law, the power is over here still. Okay, so now we're getting closer. So you see that the law, the power, the universe is still out here. So that's why many people pray and get on their knees or beg or plead or, or try to find techniques or processes and, and all kinds of stuff because they think that they have to access the law somehow, right? They think that they have to access it somewhere. So then what they do is then they try to start, they learn about techniques, right? Um, like scripting or, or affirming or visualizing or whatever. And then they start using the techniques trying to access the power juices. So they start using techniques and they're just like pinging on the power there because they still see it's something that they're trying to access or get into, right? And they, so they manifest something because they use a technique and they kept using it and they're just like, oh, cool. But then before long, they're back over here because your desires are never ending because after you manifest the thing you wanted, you're going to want 20,000 million other things, right? And because you're supposed to, we're here to create, express, continuous of, of expression of creation. So you continue to use techniques and affirm, and then you get mad because it didn't work this time, and last time it worked, and how come it's not working on this thing? It worked on the other thing, do you see? So you keep pinging and pinging and pinging at the power, and the power just like, like it's just there, right? And then you're just like, oh. and then you raise your awareness even further, and then you understand, you're like, wait a minute, I'm not separate from this power. Why do I see myself separate from the power? I'm not, I'm one with God, I'm one with this power. And then when you put your awareness, right, you choose to put your awareness on that, that you're like, wait, I am one with everything. I am before my desires, I am before everything. Like that verse about Abraham is I am, you know, first I am created right in the image of God. I have all of God's power. What am I doing over here trying to make something happen? Do you see? And then you become more merged with your I am. Do you see? And the more that you become merged with the I am, you become one. And that's the verse of my father and I are one, but my father is greater than I because my father is what imagined you, all right? But you are one with all, all the power of Christ, all the power of God, right? 
So now you're merging with this power and then you're gonna notice that you don't need to do techniques. You can if you want to. You're gonna notice that you're going to just think of something and because consciousness, right, the law, it's always working. Remember, it's always working. Now you've merged this physical being of yours with thought and free will to choose and now you're merging with it and now you're acting as one. Now you're looking at the world and every time you think something, you want something, boom, there it is, there it is. And that's why it feels like you just live this charmed life because everything's just easy and flowing for you because you're one, not because you affirmed I'm a charmed life, no, because you've merged with who you are and you're gonna notice that you don't even have to try that you let your thoughts just like boom, everything boom, everything just starts flowing to you very, very easy because you've merged and noticed, I'm holding the 3D in there, the thing that you used to think was separate, now you have the law, you have who you thought you were separate, and you've already understood the 3D is coming from through you, right? And then you've merged into the I am, the funny thing is, is when I was doing that, putting my hands together like that, I was literally was doing this in the shower, you guys, this morning. It just like came to me. And I'm like, this is cool. Um, but even 10, right? The number 10 in the Bible means going all in. And that's what it means. I was reading in uh, Eric Buttersworth, um, Spiritual Economics. In his book, he's talking about, there's a whole chapter in tithing in there, but he was talking about the number 10, right? And this is even, and someone asked me about where do I, uh, where do I learn and read and, and about the Bible? Well, first I, I have a Bible and I also use many different concordances now. And I use, and then I read a lot of different authors like Neville and many other authors, and I've listed them and I created a list in the link below if you wanna see the different books that I've read. And I have to update it because there's many more. But um, so it's not just a source, like I don't come, I don't come with interpretations, of, but I really, I used to rely more on other teachers and now I rely more on my own studying. And a lot of times I wake up in the morning and I have like so many downloads or I wake up in the middle of the night with downloads and things that I didn't understand before because I am seeking to, I am seeking and realizing more and more that I am one with the I am, with God, right? And when you do that, you yourself will receive your own downloads and you will understand things. Things will start clicking and being revealed to you and without effort. So it's it's not just one way how I study or how things come to me. It's I'm understanding the truth of who I am and that more and more is revealed to me every single day in every way through directly through I am with me. So that's to answer that question for someone. So, um, but anyway, back to the 10 is going all in, right? All in faith is you're like, you're just like, yes, right? Sign me up, I'm all in, but not just saying the words, but you are literally surrendering to the being within. So when you start, <clears throat> so what happens is when you go all in, right? What you're doing is you are, you are, rejecting this idea of antichrist man, right? You're rejecting that and you see this as human, that human flesh, right? That you are the costume, Neville calls it. And you are, let's check this if I have my microphone on, but I do. Um, so, you're re so you're no longer identifying yourself as separate, but now you're merging this into your Christ consciousness and so that's who you are so I hope that this was helpful and really guys settles you guys in more into when you're saying the words I am those are powerful words because that is God I am is is literally you're saying it's God as God speaks and things are you when you say I am that is God you're saying God that's literally what you're doing. It's a declaration. So when you declare something is yours, good, bad, or indifferent, you guys, it's not only for the good stuff, okay? It's I am, and whatever you say, because I have clients that um, have come to me and even newer ones that have been coming to me saying that they are, they have like different 
um, diagnosis, that they've been to therapy and they were diagnosed with um, anxiety or bipolar or OCD and, and they have manifested that in their body, in their physical mind, they have manifested all the different attributes of someone with that diagnosis. And, and because they were told this is what it is, and so you have to live up to whatever you declare, so you will create and manifest um, thoughts in situations for you to overthink, for example, or for you to feel sad, or for you to swing back and forth and have moods, all, all of those, right? So your declarations, what you're walking around saying, Right, start declaring what it is that you do want. You don't have to feel bad or guilty or judge yourself for what you have created. You just understand, you're like, let me just focus on what I'd rather be manifesting for myself right now because the I am is that powerful. And remember, you are, you are going to go through this letting go of this, all of these beliefs of the senses are evidence that this, that's your, the seeking pleasure, right, um, is more important. And then what you want physically or financially or whatever, like this is all the belief in separation that you need these things, that you need your manifestations, that you need to have these, these pleasures done, that you have to have these. And it's all trying to keep you separate from who you are because this version has everything. You are the all, you are the everything. You already have everything. And what we're letting go of here is the separation that we don't have it, that it's missing from us. Do you see? And when you're merging with who you are, and again, you, it's just a choice by dropping these beliefs that you're separate, that you are the one, you are the all, you are the everything in right now. All right, my loves, thanks again for being here. I love you guys so much and appreciate you guys. Thanks for liking the video and I will see you soon because you're all freaking amazing. Bye.